Welcome to Catholic Mysticism with Juran and this is Mystical Theology, A Layman's Guide, Volume 1, Book 1, Chapters 5 to 6. Let's start. So this is from the book. Uh, quote, To the saints during the pilgrimage on earth or even those in heaven who see God face to face, comprehend the bread and length and, and height and depth of God. Do they receive the fullness of Him themselves? In a way they do, or else the apostles would not pray that it be granted to his beloved Ephesians. And yet, when we consider that God is a spirit, and therefore has no dimensions, no bread, and no and length, no height, and depth, that being infinite, he cannot be held within a, the limits of any created capacity. We are warned to look for a spiritual, mysterious meaning to these words. For this reason, let us consider what is really meant. meant by enlarging our mystical knowledge of God. So because God is not contained by any uh, unquote, <laughs> this was the, so I will just gonna say quote and, and end of quote so that you will understand that this is from the book. So when we say that God is spirit and of course they, they cannot comprehend God because God is infinite and God is uh, all powerful and overwhelming and all. That's why the saints are in continuous adoration and contemplation of God because they cannot comprehend God. That's why when we say we want, uh, with this when we say that the the, in, the the saints and the angels are satisfied in God, it means that according to their to the grace and to the merits they have received from God. So, uh, the happiness in heaven is different. So not all can receive the same happiness, but they are contented. The higher the merits, the higher the grace, the higher the sacrifice here on earth, the higher, the greater the happiness in heaven. Human language is a poor uh, quote. Human language is a poor instrument when used to express the mysteries of God. It is wholly inadequate, clumsy, and treacherous. But it is also, but it is all we have. We must perforce make use of it being careful to do so cautiously and to qualify if need be the meaning of our word end quote so yeah human language is inadequate it cannot totally express how uh, how we love God how we know God how we want to 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 adore God but however this is only the only thing we have so this explanation is only in the level of human language. I really hope that you experience this mystical knowledge of God, beloved, so that by by this you will have you will understand what is uh, what is uh, Dom Savien Louis Smith is telling. Quote: This seems subtle and difficult to understand, but it is a most beautiful truth. To enlarge one's knowledge of God more especially the, the mystical knowledge of God, does not mean to know more things about God, but to know the one thing, God. God more. This is done in a manner void of images and creatures by a simple, intense, and disengaged, disengaged comprehension of God, who is absolutely, infinitely pure and simple, of Him who has said, I am who am. End quote. So when we say we want to know more of God, we do not learn more of God in terms of ideas. Of course, that's part. However, the mystical knowledge of God by love is getting to know God more. Oh, it's so it's so wonderful, right? That's why when uh, I was reflecting on the life of the martyrs, I asked, why do they give their life? For something, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm used something because I said human language are, is poor to express. When it's something or uh, the, the, your, their faith where they cannot see what they believe. So they want to die. So I, de I therefore uh, see that they know something. That's why they are willing to die for th their belief. Because when you kn knew something, when you love something, you want to have it, and that was uh, that is uh, was the op was their options that time to to have to obtain that. 
they know Christ, they know God more. And this knowledge is not, uh, cannot be expressed by human language. That's why the life of the martyrs are so wonderful. And I tell you that they know something that we do not know. That is why they gave themselves to die for the love of God, for their belief. But the so, uh, quote, but the soul that is in ignorance, the worldly soul, what does she say to what the, what's the, what does she say? To gold and silver and things of earth, she says, You are my gods, I love you, you reign supreme in all my thoughts. I delight in you. Surely you will give me happiness. Like the Hebrews of old at the foot of Mount Sinai before the golden calf. These are the thy gods, O Israel. So does the sinner say to the creatures of flesh and blood, form of the slime of earth, things of a day that will rot on the morrow? These are my gods, would that I might enjoy them here on this earth forever. It is thus, alas, that the devil interposes himself in God's place and is worshipped as God. Did he not say to our divine Lord himself, all these things, all this the pleasures and the honors of this world will I give it to thee. If fall if falling down thou wilt adore me. So end quote. <laughs> I already forgot the quote and end quote. So when I say quote, it's uh, I'm starting to to read from the book and end quote that's the last part I read from the book. Because uh, um I wa I really want to continue what I'm doing but I don't have much time and we don't have electricity so i need to utilize to preach and to evangelize mystical theology and i hope so you will uh, you'll be interested because uh, it's a wonderful study o on studying mystical theology it covers off the mystical life and the mystic mysticism and so on and so forth so the soul that is in the world that loves pleasure and des and vanities cannot uh, expand their knowledge because they do not worship God. Even though they say they love God, their heart are far from God. That's why our Lord said in the Gospel that they worship me with their lips but, but their heart are far from me. So it's a necessity to understand detachment because detachment will help us to reach the, uh, the mystical knowledge of God by love. Quote, Comparatively, few there are who answers with our Lord. The Lord thy God shalt thou adore, and him only shalt thou serve. To the false gods of the world, which can never satisfy, how many there are who sacrifice all, talent, honor, health, time, fortune, body, and soul, and even the souls of others dependent on them. Does not treason such as this, if unrepented, throw our lurid light on the reality of, of hellfire. But to return to the consideration of the knowledge of God and enlarging it by increase in depth and intensity of the perception of God. End quote. To those who love the world more than God, they find themselves in entanglement of not knowing God more. When you want to know God, you need to let go of everything so that when your heart is empty God fills it and when your heart is filled with God God's love it expands and when it expands more it will grow more and more and more until you are burning in love with God how on, how only few people achieve this and I hope many of us including me can increase our mystical knowledge of God quote the spiritual experiences of a soul wholly abandoned to God succeed each other with an astounding variety and number. In the life of Saint Angela of Foligno, what strikes one particularly is how each manifestation of God is so marvelous to her that it throws in the shades, shade or blots out entirely all those that preceded it. The saint is at loss to express her admiration of this effect of God's love. Something similar to this place in the mystic soul. It is as though God presented one aspect of his 
divine goodness to her and then we drew it saying not this it is not this and then another aspect and we do it it's also saying nay not this it is not this at every fresh mystical experience the perception of god becomes clearer more evident more sweet more penetrating and yet less and less demonstra demonstrable demonstrable just because it is so intimate, it works its way through unknown paths into the depths of inner consciousness. And nothing is able to shake the assurance of the soul, the soul that God is there and, there and that she touches Him and is being acted upon by Him in a way that is altogether different from the previous to her entrance into the mystic life. Now, this is the way the mystical knowledge of God can be said to enlarge this is the way the mystical knowledge of god can be said to enlarge so i'm gonna again i'm gonna add <laughs> in reality what takes place is this god is working that the fresh the precious material the mystic soul which has become plastic and passive in his hands he is scooping it out pressing it and inside as it were ex extending its walls and boundaries First, he empties it of self and all things else and makes it absolutely clean and then he makes it larger and larger and takes possession of it, filling it with his own fullness. By each fresh spiritual experience, the soul grows more and more capable of tasting how sweet is, how sweet her Lord is, how sweet is the Lord. So, is every fresh mystical experience what this or mystical experience or spiritual experiences the soul is renewed and expanded what does it mean it means that every time we encounter god we have a loving conversation with god and we open our hearts to god our heart expands alongside with it now by each divine touch, she is made more pure, more refined, more akin to God, more able to enjoy Him. At the same time, she becomes more trustful, familiar, and childlike in her dealings with her beloved. The soul has now become more dead to self and the world, and more responsive to least touch of the Holy Spirit. That is, uh, that is what is really meant by enlarging one's mystical knowledge of God. Now, how we fail to enlarge our mystical knowledge. How does it happen that the mystical knowledge that comes by love remains for the greater part of Christians, but rudimentarily and undeveloped? How is it that we have so little of that intimate, conscious, constant union with God, which is the outcome of, I forgot, sorry, uh, quote, how does it happen that the mystical knowledge that comes by love remains for the greater part of Christians, but rudimentarily and undeveloped. How is it that we have so little of the intimate, conscious, constant union with God, which is the outcome, which is the outcome of true love, and and which constitutes the mystical life? Whose fault it is, God's or our own? Has God perhaps per chance failed to? make advances to us and to show us the way i answer epatically no the good god has made loving advances to us for there's not one of us who ha who, ha who has not tasted at some time or other that god is sweet you remember when you were praying did you, did you feel some happiness some joy some contentment that is how God, that is God is telling you that He is present within you. By means of that, uh, many of us Christians experience that that kind of mystical knowledge of God by love that we know God somehow and we do not know how to express our knowledge about God. However, why do we fail to to expand it to to have it more? Quote In reality then we have 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 uh, then in, in reality then we have all had a taste and beginning of the, the higher knowledge of god the mystical experiential knowledge communicated directly into the soul by god himself a taste and a beginning but nothing more why is this end quote 
why is this my dear beloved do you ask yourself ask yourself why is not you are not uh, in continual active and conscious union with the divine why is that quote because we have not kept up the loving intercourse with god to which we were invited we are to blame the fault is ours end quote that's why it's so important that we have knowledge on mental mental prayer only few does do mental prayer that's uh, problematic why because mental prayer helps us to be strong to help us in our spiritual life without mental prayer we become nothing yes saint Teresa of avila has said about many said about many things about mental prayer unfortunately i didn't have the, the, the quote but you can search in the google what what saint Teresa of avila said in mental about mental prayer and you will see how important it is quote if we wish to know a person intimately we are not satisfied with merely becoming acquainted with that person we seek to keep our to keep up our intercourse with him to this analogy i end quote this an analogy give uh done by the by uh dom saviano smith that we are not keeping up in terms of our loving intercourse conversation dialogue with god by that by that means we we do not we do not do our prayer properly we do not do mental prayer which is troubling why because it uh, it shows lack of devotion so that's why every day every moment you are in the presence of god and i will tell you that it is that is so important in the mystical life quote if this be if this be the case with poor human love and friendship what may we not hope of the divine the more we endeavor to come near to god speaking with him in the secret of our heart the more he will make himself known to us and other hand the more appreciative we are of his divine goodness and the more we strive to cultivate his friendship so much the more will he love us in return then he will unfold to us the treasures of his heart then shall we be permitted to feel the marvelous charms of his sacred humanity and the infinite sweetness of his divinity saints pray always they talk to god they converse to god day and night they do not sleep without talking to god that is how important is vocal prayer and mental prayer so i do, do suggest to start doing mental prayer there are so many things in you uh, so many so many uh what do you call it? so many uh in in youtube so many ways how to do mental prayer and i will share mine also especially in this modern modern days how to do mental prayer quote we know now why is it that our mystical knowledge of god has remained undeveloped and has borne no fruit through no fault on the part of god was it arrested in its beginnings loving intercourse by means of mental prayer has not been kept up we may be in the state of grace receive the sacraments and say customary prayers we have not opened to him the floodgates of our soul nor allowed all our affections to flow forth impetuously unto him to receive in return the overflowing and flowing of his love in his of his loving tenderness no wonder we remain dryness and far from god end quote as you can see my dear friends because of our laziness in terms of mental prayer we find ourselves stuck in our uh in our enlarging enlargement enlarging our mystical knowledge of god by love so i hope my dear friends that we have ta uh, we make time in vocal prayer and we do always mental prayer quote let us go st let us go to a step farther and ask why did we not keep up and develop our first acquaintances with god by love now it is not always out of the indifference or levity that a soul of goodwill is arrested on its way to god sometimes it is through a lamentable mistake because what concerns the mystical life is not known or understood hence 
It happens that after the visitings of God to the soul, the reaction which inevitably follows plunging the soul into dryness and darkness surprises her and causes her to be tempted to abandon the whole enterprise of the spiritual life. She is inclined to think she had made she has made a mistake in aiming so high and is not called to the ways of of the the ways of the life of love. When we experience spiritual dry uh, end quote, sorry, I forgot end quote. So when we experience spiritual dryness, we sometimes we sometimes fall into the idea of giving up prayer. Giving up mental prayer, giving up many things. However, that's not the case. Because when we do not feel God, uh, we should have we should have more love for God. When we do not feel God is near to us, we should increase our prayers, our love, our devotion to Him, so that we could we will not fall into the uh, into weakness we will not fall into into uh uh tibidity, tibidity or lukewarmness quote what then is to be done change completely our way of acting seek out god and call upon him and strive to be ever mindful of his presence that as as often as we can enter into the secret chamber of our heart and speak with him and listen to him let us enter resolute, resolutely upon the way of love there need be no fear that the good God will hold aloof from us. End quote. And to finish, quote, A man whom we have, a man whom we had so neglected after he had made advances to us, desiring to live with us on terms of friendship, might have behaved thus. He might reproach us, saying, "What, you come to me after all you have done." He might trust the past upon us and turn his back upon us. A man, yes, but the good God never. Though we have neglected him in the past, we need not now mistrust him. We may go back to him and we shall find that sooner or later he will welcome us and lavish us uh, on us his treasures. So, this is the end and... Thank you for listening and I hope you lear learn something in this subject and please do like, share and subscribe and if you can please do support the channel with financial help. That's all God, God bless you.